You know, interestingly, what you add here, your video title, is one of the most important things that'll either allow you to get a ton of views or sadly, not many views at all. And in this video, I wanna walk you through the process, which YouTube settings to turn on, which ones to leverage, and which ones don't really matter that much. And honestly, I don't spend much time at all. But fact of the matter is there are about four or five settings. Some are buried, they're hard to find. Let's jump into it. The first field is your video title and this is by far the most important thing you can do. Spending just a little bit of time qualifying your topic can really help you to increase your views. This video is such a great example. Took me the same amount of time as this video and yet it drove so many more views. I'll explain how to leverage that as we move forward, and I'll link you to a really powerful video that goes into the depth of how to identify proven winners in real time. That's the key. Next up is your video description. And all I do is I voice dictate into the description box describing what the video is about. And I think about how viewers might find my video and the search terms they may be interested in. As I've mentioned in the past, it's not about targeting search. It is about making it easy for the YouTube algorithm to connect my video here to a YouTube viewer here. And the more I can get really clear on the kinds of keyword phrases and topics that matter to a viewer, the more likely I get views. So I simply do some voice dictation, I correct any errors, and I move on. The truth of the matter is you're not that likely to get a lot of views because you optimize your YouTube description. We're gonna talk about you know, some of these fields. They're not gonna really help you boost your results, and yet some are. So the description is just that, it's a description. This is a video platform where people watch and you want them to spend time. I will incorporate a few affiliate links to make money based on products and services I absolutely love. And that's something you may want to incorporate as well. But there again, there's not a lot of benefit to the description. And let's move on. Next up, I'm gonna add a thumbnail and that's it. Now, there is something called test and compare that I've been using and it's been helping me to increase my watch time. I'll link you to a video at the end of this video and or in the description that covers how to leverage that because it's very powerful and can only help you to increase your, your watch time. But more importantly, I've really been learning about my audience and what they're likely to click on and watch, which is super helpful. Again, I'll link you to that video at the end of this one. Next up is your playlist. And again, you know, there are some videos from way back in the day talking about how to optimize your playlist. You'll notice as you browse YouTube, almost all the content you see is single videos. It's very hard to optimize a playlist, but if you wanna label it, you know, over 40 to make it easy to organize your channel later, and we're gonna talk a little bit about that because that is actually one of the things you can do to make sure viewers who are finding your channel see the best videos for them which can only help you to get more views from a returning viewer, which really signals the algorithm. Again, we'll get to that. It's the last thing just because of the structure of this video. So, you know, I just organize my playlist. I add videos into the playlist that matter, and then I move on. And next up, we have to designate whether or not your video is made for kids. If that's the case, check this box. Next up, we have to designate if your video contains paid promotion. So I work with Opus Clip, love Opus Clip, and when I talk about them in my videos, I always say, hey, this is a sponsored video, thank you, Opus Clip, and I check that box. Affiliate links, if you wanna be safe, if you're incorporating affiliate links, you can also check the box. And then next up is altered content. Do any of the following describe your content? makes a real person appear to say something they didn't say or do. This is because YouTubers have been spoofing famous celebrities, politicians, and so on. If you're using any AI content and you wanna be safe, mark this as yes. My video includes altered content and you'll be safe. 
Next up is automatic chapters. I unchecked that. I also unchecked featured places. Now, if you're in New York City in Central Park, maybe this could help you be discovered more. You might wanna click it on. For me, my videos don't have anything to do with specific locations, so I uncheck it. Tags, <laughs> okay, let's talk about tags. I actually added tags as I made this screen re recording, but uh, the last 20 videos, I don't think I've added any tags. My views are actually increasing exponentially, and the importance of tags today is very low. What matters is keeping viewers watching and engaged with your videos. Now, that being said, if you wanna add tags, awesome, do that. Next up, we have language and certificates. Uh, all of this stuff, I don't really worry too much about. In fact, you know, I blow through this so very fast because the value is in an actual video, the thing that people watch. But again, there are a few fields that are helpful. License and distribution, standard, allow embedding. This one is important. I like to keep this checked so anybody can take my video and embed it in their video. In fact, I messaged my friend Nick Nimmin the other day and I'm like, hey, tubes, uh, tube filter, oh my God, so many tubes, tube filter incorporated your video into one of their articles. So that was his video being discovered by anybody that looked at that particular web page on tube filter and noticed his video. You know what I mean? It's more exposure, so I really like to allow embedding. This next one, I've heard some creators talk about like unchecking this box, but I wouldn't mess with that. If your videos are on the same type of a subject, let your subscribers know. If you create something wildly different, then uncheck the box, unless the topic of the video is wildly different than what you normally create, in which off you'd be much better off publishing the video on a separate channel altogether. When you start going too broad covering different uh, topics, it hurts your CTR. It hurts how often people are clicking on your video. If you make a video typically about cooking and then you're talking about gaming, those people that subscribe for cooking probably aren't gonna be interested in the new Call of Duty or Battlefield. And that's gonna hurt how many people click. And if they do, they're probably gonna bail and that's gonna hurt your watch time, food for thought. Shorts mixing, I just leave this uh, the way it is. Allow video and audio remixing. Category, uh, go ahead and, and you know select whatever you think makes the most sense. Again, this doesn't really matter that much. Here I chose education and then how to, I believe, how to, tips. There it is, tips. Comments and rating. I like my comments on. If I see any spam, I take care of it. Easy peasy. Monetization, I select on. And then I go through, and what's really important is you're gonna select and tell YouTube whether or not your video contains any of these things. Inappropriate language, adult themes, violence, shocking content, harmful acts, unreliable claims, recreational drug use, enabling dishonest behavior, harmful or derogatory content, firearms related content, sensitive events, and finally, controversial issues. If your video really covers any of those things, you kind of got to select that and notify YouTube, and then they're going to make a decision based on how eligible your video is for monetization. A lot of you are, are just getting monetized now, and like, I don't swear too often, every once in a while, and if you swear once, five minutes into the video, it's probably not a big deal but you would be hard pressed to find a video of me swearing. I don't cover things that are uh, really controversial and I'm okay. I recommend you do the same if you wanna maximize your earning potential. Then you click submit rating and then you're good to go. Next up is a really powerful opportunity though and it's end screens. So as you're uploading here at the end, notice this button here, add an end screen, import from video. This is one of the most powerful things you can do to drive more views. It's not in the tool. This is only a tool. It's really in how you use it and what you say. So one of my videos drove 1.9 million views 
and it had an extremely high click-through ratio on an end screen, over 20%. Imagine that, 20% of the viewers watched all the way till the end and they clicked on an end screen, which typically I only add videos and in this case, I changed it to a playlist and I think I'm gonna do that. What I'm gonna do is I call out one specific video that the viewer may be interested in and I also include another video or best for viewer and or playlist. The idea is I really want my viewers to watch another video because that increases my channel's watch time and it sends a really powerful signal to the algorithm. It's really in how you use this. The thing you don't wanna do is get to the end of your video and say, hey, thank you for watching. That signifies that the video's over and the viewer should go somewhere else. Instead, you wanna talk about this other strategy that's really helpful if it's a cooking video, like really understanding how to roast your chicken or creating a delicious pesto for your minestrone soup. And then you mention that video is here. And then when you mention that, the end screen pops up on screen and that keeps the viewer on your channel and it signals the algorithm, super powerful. And here you can see I'm importing end screens from my last video. And you can see here I have best for viewer, that's the blue one I'm moving around. And then I have another specific video about the YouTube algorithm. And what I do is I pay attention to the videos that have performed the best. And I mention those at the end of the current video that I'm filming, super, super powerful. So here you can see now I'm going in and I'm gonna select playlist instead of best for viewer. So I'm gonna delete that. And now I'm gonna click on element playlist and then I choose a playlist that represents what I want to incorporate into the end screen. On the last page, you can add a music license. You can add subtitles. Now, YouTube will do this automatically, and I just do that. If your speech is clear, it'll do a fine job. You don't have to worry about transcribing your video. I can tag products because I have a channel with over 10,000 subscribers. This is a newer feature released in the last year or so that allows YouTubers to incorporate shopping into their actual videos by tagging products. Really helpful. Again, end screens and then add a card. I don't really use cards anymore. I use end screens and that's it. Cards pop up any time in your video and you can say, check out that video in the card, but I wanna keep my viewers watching the current video as long as possible. Then I add an end screen because it's the end and I wanna keep them on my channel. So because of that, I think cards is kind of the old way of doing things. And then visibility, click on unlisted here it's really the best way to allow YouTube to go through and check your video once you're monetized and see if there are any issues that would flag the video and reduce the amount of advertisements on your video and sadly reduce your earning potential. Now here we're on the video details page and what I'll come in and here you can see I'm gonna select unlisted once again, I'll click done. And then I'm gonna scroll down, I'm gonna look at my end screen and my thumbnail. So the thumbnail's in place there, fantastic. And then I'm just looking at the placement of the end screens. You can see I'm right in the middle, I've got a nice placement. I have two, one video I should say, and a playlist, and then my channel subscribe icon in the middle. Click save and I'm good to go. Now, next up, we're gonna go to a really powerful setting that'll absolutely help you to get more views and watch time. It's called the For You section. To navigate to that, click on Customization, and then you're gonna scroll down and you're looking for it, but it's not there. It's actually in the navigation up above. You're gonna click on Home tab. And now we have the layout. First thing I wanna mention, is back in the day there was something called a channel trailer that creators would create so viewers landing on their channel could kind of learn about the channel. I would not spend any time creating a special advertisement for your channel. Instead, take one of the videos that's done well, gaining your channel more views and subscribers, and simply pl place it in the layout here. 
Notice channel trailer for people who haven't subscribed and then featured video for returning subscribers. I just paste in the, the same one and I'm done and I move on. Again, pay attention to the video that's performing the best and add that here. But next, we wanna scroll down and notice I have products from my store. This is another opportunity that you can access once you have, I think it's 10,000 subscribers. I have some hoodies, some stickers, and so on. And then for you, this is super powerful and it's based on each individual viewer. This part is important. So when you see it, understand that the algorithm is selecting videos for you but every new viewer or returning viewer that lands on your channel, well, the videos in that position in the For You section will be selected based on the types of videos they've watched in the past. So when you turn this on and then you drag it to the top of your channel, you'll see For You and those videos are chosen specifically for each individual viewer. Now, if you go into the setting, notice there are a few options you have. One is content type. You can add in videos, shorts, and or live streams. So for me, right now I'm building my channel back up and I really value videos. If you're a shorts creator, add shorts to the top, whatever makes the most sense. And then this one is really important. My content I feel right now is somewhat different than what I published back in the day. And people are telling me I love what you're doing right now. So I've selected recent content only in this particular box. And then I click on publish and I'm good to go. I'm gonna create another video at some point where I talk about the ideas of how to really optimize your channel. But fact of the matter, that's really a small win. I think you're better off focusing on individual videos. And if we access my channel, this is what it looks like. Here you can see the featured video. This is a video that's done well for my channel. And there it is, the For You section. These videos have been selected for me based on my viewing patterns and history. But check this out. This video on the screen now really covers how to leverage thumbnail testing, which absolutely can increase your watch time and likelihood that you get more views. Check out that video and I'll see you there. You dig?